It's time for the showdown! Oh for god, my phone. Oh, again. Oh, that's gone. It. No, no, not on the computer. Oh, man. How's it going, everybody? Your boy is back. This is Dishnet34 welcoming you to tonight's episode of the This Week in Perfect Team Weekly Showdown. Oh, man. And of course, you know, <laughs> already off to a great start. Professionalism with the phone and the computer going off at the same time. And I'm getting back in the swing of things, guys. So, oh, man, it is great to be back. Yeah, I don't know about the fuzziness. I don't know how to make that stop. But, um, but yeah, it is great. It is wonderful to be back on the stream. <laughs> a little less toothy, perhaps? Yeah, yeah, you could say that. Uh, just coming back from wisdom tooth surgery last week. I want to thank you guys for, for checking in on me uh, throughout the entire process. This is... This is pretty good. This it's pretty good. I I don't know about wiser, um, but uh, but yeah. But tonight, guys, I come before you as a man in search of an answer, an answer to a very important question, and that question is: Am I cursed? And I mean, it's a legitimate question. So as y'all know, I came into last week's This Week in Perfect Team weekly showdown, the one that didn't air last week, having not won a single This Week in Perfect Team weekly showdown stream game yet in 2021. I still entered last week anyway, because, you know, it's a fun tournament and you never know what can happen. So I go ahead and I actually have a little bit of time to create my team last week, Diamond 1875 cap, for that tournament. So as I'm sitting around waiting for the first sim to, to come in, I was 100% confident that with my track record lately, you know, I'd surely lose that first round game, continue my 0 for 2021 20, streak, keep that going, stream or no stream. But then, something weird happened. I don't know if it was the game taking pity on me or what, but I won that first game. And I figured, okay, the game's taking pity on me because I'm recovering from surgery. Okay, haha, <laughs> that's, that's funny game. Okay, we're, we're good. You can stop the pity. You can make me lose now. The next sim comes in and I win again. And I'm completely befuddled by this point. I keep watching. I win the third round. And then I win round four on a walk-off homer in the 11th inning to make it to the money rounds. And at this point, my folks are sitting on the couch next to me watching me make all these crazy faces watching these sims come in and watching me win. They're laughing at me at this point. They're almost as befuddled with this developing situation as I am. And I'm like, at this point, okay, game, we're good. I can take my complimentary pity diamond pack and leave, thank you. But then something even stranger happened. I won the quarterfinals. And then I won the semifinals in an absolute monster comeback. And you know, you know something special is happening when Joe Odom hits a clutch double in a late inning. And I win in 11 innings in that one too. And I'm off to my either my first ever or second ever weekly showdown finals. And I'm like, oh my God, am I seriously going to win on the night that I don't stream? Are you kidding me, game? 
However, I lost in a three-game final, which was actually pretty interesting. So, well, I lost a winner-take-all in Game 3. I got three diamond packs last week. So I am coming in search of an answer. Does my teams... Do my teams have performance anxiety? And Trenton makes a good point. If you don't stream it, it doesn't count. <laughs> so this is where we come in to tonight's stream. We're trying to figure out if I can actually, if my teams can actually win a game on stream. Because this is, this, I feel like I have a streamer's curse on me right now. And it was even more exacerbated by what happened last week. So let's go to the game screen. And let's let's take stock of tonight. So first place getting five diamond packs. Second place getting three diamond packs. Third and fourth getting two diamond packs. And fifth through eighth getting one diamond pack tonight. We are in a bronze 1700 cap tournament here. Which, honestly... Honestly, that is, um, is high. I will say that. And we'll, we'll probably have to adjust it maybe next time a high bronze cap is on the wheel. But we'll, we'll see what happens. Because, I mean, I was able to get really high high players in here. You know, between the 66 and 69 range. So, Oh, yeah, that's right. We need to do the wheel. We need to do the wheel for next week. Ah, wheel formats. Let's spin it. Let's go. Let's get going. Let's see what uh, horrors await us next week. All right. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? We're spinning again. Yeah, Lobat's right. Guessing most didn't need to change their default bronze rosters much. Yeah, I mean, I can kind of see that. Come on. Ooh, this will be a fun one. A live open 1875 cap. 1875 cap live open. That. Should be a fun one. You get to use your live cards in this one. This is going to be a fun format. Oh, man. All right. So let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and close the wheel of formats. Let's get back to the game screen here. Here's what my roster looks like for tonight. So we have Vic Aldridge, Yanni Trinos, Teddy Higuera, Dustin May, and Ray Sadecki in my rotation. Got uh, Don Oss, Armando Benitez, Nate Cornejo, Vic Lombardi, Brandon McCarthy, Logan Verrett, and Jonathan Loisega in my bullpen. Got Smokey Burgess, Mike Lavalier, Mike, Vic Power, Frank Torrey, Jim Gilliam, Don Hoke. Cesar Tovar, Ozzy Smith, Roger Cedeno, Harvey Keen, Coco Crisp, Luis Gonzalez, Kevin Pillar, and Jose Martinez in my lineups tonight. That should be a fun one. Should be an interesting one. All right, real quick, it's time for the roll call. Let's figure out, let's see who the 128 teams are who are going to be competing for those five diamond packs tonight. We have the Tigers Bay Rays taking on Prestige Worldwide. We have the North York Gridlock taking on the Hickory Crawdads. The BF Bronze Bombers taking on the Botafogo Sao Paulo. The Outrimmer Hospitalers will face the Falstaff Fury. The Topanga Wild Stars will take on the Airlog Muscle Guts. The Hayesville Mercury taking on the Burke Mongooses. The Ciudad Trujillo Dragones will take on the St. Babysburg Brocks. The Markham Baseball Club will take on the Walla Walla Wallabies. The Atmospheric Oxygen will take on Rogers County Red Wolves. The Ottawa Champions will take on the Man Manitowoc Red Raiders. The Green Park Gophers will take on the Charbonneau Lynx. The Muskoka Lake Monsters will take on the Sobo Merchants. 
the Castropia Genrens will face off with your hometown, Las Vegas Gamblers. The Murray Punishers will take on the Melmont Leashes. The Jacksonville Suns will take on the Charleston Chameleons. The Emmett Aces will take on the Fiji Iguana. The Ultimate Warriors will take on the Fullerton Whalers. The Narsh Returners will take on the Flagstaff Furies. The Roger the Cabin Boy will take on the Dwarven Dodgers. The Beaver Creek Landings will face the Perfectly Cromulent. The Trenton Christians will take on the Aliso Viejo A for Efforts. The Culver City Dust Mops will take on the Welland Wizards. The Jersey City I.I.s will take on the Illyria Rebellion. The NJ Wrestlers will take on the Mahopic Indians. The, Norris, the Morristown Frackers will take on the Charleston Thunder. The Florida Men will take on the Corporate Sellouts. j Pax Mad Cat will take on the Memphis Chicks. Ooh, cats versus birds in that one. That should be fun. Salt City Brewers will take on the Cats Pajamas. The Hasselberry Hounds will take on New York NYS. The Nisku Derricks will take on the Norwood Diamonders. The Dream of the 90s will take on the Fort Collins Rams. The Philadelphia Wild Dogs will take on Matthew Six. The Lisbon Tugas will take on the South Park Cows. The Springfield Round Trippers will face the Alston Wolf Spiders. The Gensokyo Yokai will take on the Sacramento Spiders. The Madison Dudgeons will take on the Tower Grove Supercells. Oh boy, moving on right down the list. The Burnaby Bees will take on the Watsonville Detectives. Potato 2001 will take on the Texas Rockets. Richie makes di Oh, come on now. A dish Richie Ashburn joke. Come on now. They're facing the Long Beach usual suspects. The Varner Trailblazers will take on the 1972 Winslow Arizonas. The Falstaff Fiery Furnaces will take on... The Dor Dorset Devil Dogs. The Sarah Angels will take on the Grossmont Foothillers. The Mount Royal Housecats will take on the Connecticut Conmen. The Jack Crow Starmovers will take on the Ellicott City Express. The Atlanta Falcons will take on the Green Lake Fish and Chips. The Mississauga Rush will take on the Alaskan Black Bears. The Mighty Mariners will take on the Manchester Camels. The Murray Airbuds will take on the Binghamton Bobcats. SLC Punks will take on the Castroville Mashers. Richie Ashburn <laughs> will take on the Fortney Ones. The Charlton Killer K's will take on the Brooklyn Superbas. The New Jersey Murderers will take on the Maine Guides. The St. Michael's Shoehorns will take on the Bedlington Terriers. The Shiny Golds and Bell will take on the Vin Scullies. The Arizona Boys of Summer will take on the Slateport Sableyes. The Carne Asada Nachos will face the Suburbia Squalor. The Mint Hill Hawks will take on Richie and the Ashburns. <laughs> oh, man. The Spam will take on Woodbridge Whalers. The Milwaukee Pilots will take on the Hokkaido Mr. Sparkles. The Duluth Redbirds will take on the Castleberry Storm. And we got the Hazard County Dukes taking on the Wilmington Swashbucklers. The Brooklyn Cyclones taking on Pax, 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 he, 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 NBA 2K. Okay, that's a, certainly a team name. The Indianapolis Essentials will take on the Bronx Bombers and the Quid Pro Roll Podcast will take on the Scott Township Colts. Holy cow, some interesting team names tonight. Whoo boy. Swig of lemonade here after that. Hmm. I kind of hope he has to say X, X, X a million times in the final. <laughs> Honestly, I wouldn't put it past people. I wouldn't put it past, past the game to troll me like that after last week. But anyway, real quick, let's go ahead and take a look at my um, my opponent here. As soon as I can find them again. I don't know they're here. There we are. The Castopia Genrens. Let's see uh, see what they got going on here. <laughs> they shall have to beat all Ashburn teams to win the tournament. Oh, man. 
Okay, he's got kind of a kind of a similar rotation here. He's got Aldridge, he's got Savali, he's got Nathan Ivaldi. Interesting selection there. Zach Granke and Dustin May. Okay, you got Yanni Torinos, John Geb Gellner, Bill Henry, Paul Lindblad, AJ Puck, Bruce Suter, Mike Garman. Okay. Hank Severett at catcher, Frank Torrey, Wally Backman, Scott Fletcher, Tommy Helms, Cecil Travis, Ozzie Smith. Tony Womack, Vince Coleman, Harvey Keene, Vic Davalio, Jesus Alou, Greg Gross, and Paul Warner. Oh, that's Spanish for home runs. Pronounced like Jean Ron. Okay. All right, I did not know that. Thank you for the uh, thank you for the uh, little Spanish lesson there, right, Bell? Wasn't hundred percent sure on that. That's uh, it's pretty good. I do appreciate it. All right, we're waiting for that first sim to come in. And if I am a batting man, which I'm not. I honestly think I'm going to lose first round again. I don't actually live in Las Vegas, j -Pack. That's a that's a. Uh, that's a funny, uh, that's a funny story. <laughs> My team is from Las Vegas. I'm not. <laughs> I mean, hey, I mean, it's worth a shot. I, mean, I just want to win a game on stream. I'm going to be so happy if I win a game on stream tonight. You won't understand how happy that'd make me. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, man. Just waiting on that first sim to come in, and we'll uh, we'll get started. And I also, as you can see, I have 29 packs tonight to open up for Call Your Shot. <laughs> law of averages is on my side. Well, I don't know, I don't know if I trust the law, and av law of averages anymore. I had, a, I had a session of Among Us games last night with some friends, and... This one guy that I that um that I play Among Us with, at one point back in a couple months ago, this guy had like a run of twenty nine straight games as crewmate. Last night he had three out of four rounds where he was imposter, like just absolute chaos. And in in that third in that third out of four rounds, I even I even said, you know, statistically, knowing his track record, it does not make sense that he would be an imposter three out of four rounds. And lo and behold, he was. And we were down to three people. Two, my the two crew, me and a crewmate that, oh man, that had already confirmed each other, and then him, we won on tasks anyway. So, oh my goodness! All right, Sim is in. Here goes something. I don't know what exactly it's gonna be, but. Hmm, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I really don't. When are we getting the OTP community among us streams? I don't know. I don't know. It's... I don't know. I'll have to invite, I'll have to invite you all on my streams sometime, my personal streams. I, I don't know. That'd be, that'd be interesting. Try to get a few games in or something. All right. Highlights are in. Let's see what happens. This should get interesting. Ah, D Boyer referencing our, uh, referencing the Diamond League I'm in. Apparently we play soon in that one. I wish you the best of luck. Um, as far as I know, I'm at the very least tied in, uh, my division right now. 
with the uh, Osbury Springboks. Always a tough team to, to be against. All right, let's go to the game screen. Let's go to round one. And we pick it up in the top of the second. Vic Aldridge on the mound for the Gamblers. Cecil Travis at the plate. No, no outs. Runner on, and that one's grounded to short. Could be two to second for one. The relay in time for the double play. Gamblers turning a huge double play there. And that will bring Ozzie Smith to the plate. Hank Severed on second with two outs. Facing Aldridge. The 0-1 pitch, and that one is in the right field, and that one's going to fall in for a base hit. Just in front of Gonzalez, the throw home, and Severed is safe. Smith will go to second, and it's 1-0 Jean Rome. And we head to the bottom of the fourth. The Gamblers still do not have a hit in this one, as Vic Power, the designated hitter, will come to the plate facing Aldridge. The 1-1. And that one's lined in the left center field, and that one's down. It'll go off the wall. Power rounding first, heading for second. And he's going to round second and head for third. Here comes the throw from Coleman, and it's not in time. It's a two-out triple for Vic Power. But that's all they get in that inning, and we head to the top of the fifth. Wally Backman at the plate for the Jones. Facing Vic Aldridge, runners on first and second with one out. 2-2 two -two count. And a line, ground ball to second, a diving play, but no throw from the second baseman, Gilliam. And the bases are loaded with one out for Paul Warner. A full count from Aldridge coming, and that one's popped up center field. Fairly deep and playable, and... Okay, sure. Um, that was a throw. That was certainly a throw back to the infield. Okay, we got the out. So two outs, two nothing now. And that was, uh, yeah, I have the 66 overall Vic Power, not the 59 on this roster. So we head now to the bottom of the fifth. Runner on first, one out for Coco Crisp. 1-1 one, one from Aldridge, and that one's in the deep center field, and over the head of the center fielder, Davileo. Here comes Hoke for third, and he will stop there. So it's up to Mike Lavalier with, the, with second and third with one out, facing Aldridge. Full count. Line drive, center field, and a diving play made by Davileo. Tagging up at third and scoring is Hoke. It's 2-1. to one. We head to the bottom of the sixth now. Roger Cedeno at the plate for the Gamblers facing Aldridge. Full count pitch and he walked in ball four. He's now bring Frank Torrey to the plate. For another full count here and this one is lifted into left center field. And it'll be playable for the center fielder Davileo. One gone. Yanni Torinos will come in to pitch now for the Jonrons as Vic Power will come to the plate. Runner on second with one out. The 1 0 pitch from Torinos, and that one's driven deep into left center field. Ball go far for Vic Power. And the Gamblers are up 3 to 2. A two run shot. Welcome to the game, Yanni Torinos. And here's Coco Crisp facing Torinos, the 2-0. Line drive, right field, base hit. Here comes Gilliam for third, rounding third, heading home. The throw from Gross, not in time, and the Gamblers increase the lead. It's 4-2. To Top eight now. Vic Lombardi will come in to pitch for the Gamblers. Paul Wanner will lead things off. Here's the first pitch. And that one is driven deep into right field, and Warner has a homer. And the Jonrons are within one now. It's four to three. So that'll bring Frank Torrey to the plate. Count two one. The pitch from Lombardi. That one's grounded to second. Gilliam to first. One gone. 
So I'll bring Greg Gross to the plate, the right fielder for the Genrons. The 1-1 one -one from Lombardi, and that one is up the middle in a base hit. So a one-out single there for the right fielder, and they'll bring Harvey Keane to the plate. Not a guy you want to face if you're a lefty here. Runner on first, one out in the 1-0 pitch, and that one's lined in a left field, and a running catch made by Cedeno. Two gone. So I'll bring Hank Severed to the plate. Lombardi behind, 3-0 in the count, and he lost him on four straight. So that will bring Ozzie Smith to the plate, a chance to tie the game for the genres, and Jesus Alou will come in to pinch hit. The count, one and one, the pitch. Line drive right field, that's into the corner. That'll score one, maybe two. Throw coming into second. And coming around to score is Severed, and the John Runs take the lead. A blow-up inning for Vic Lombardi, and it's 5-4 for Kestropia. Bottom eight, Jim Gilliam leading off against John Gellner, and that one's grounded right back to the mound. Throw to first, one gone. Two outs for Don Hoke. 2-1. Ground ball to short. Ozzy to first to end the inning. And we head to the ninth. 5-4 Castropia. Jonathan Loisega will come in to pitch for the Gamblers facing Wally Backman. Count 2-0 the pitch. Ground ball sharply to third, but no throw from the third baseman Hoke. Infield single there, but that's all they get. We head to the bottom of the ninth. Last call for the Gamblers. Coco Crisp will lead things off here in the bottom of the ninth. Facing Gellner. The first pitch. Swing a high fly ball. Deep right field. Ball go far for Coco Crisp. Whoa, Nelly. We are tied! And here's Mike Lavalier. Full count from Gellner. That one's grounded right back to the mound. A diving play, and he throws it away in the right field! Lavalier will go to second, and the winning run is in scoring position! Can the stream curse end for the Gamblers? Ozzy Smith at the plate. Count 2-2. Two, two. Popped up. Behind second in the shortstop. Womack will have it for the out. One gone. So that will bring Roger Cedeno to the plate. Count 0-2. Oh, Swing and a miss. Strike three. And Gellner with a big strikeout there. It all comes down to Frank Torrey. Lavalier on second with two outs. A walk-off opportunity here. The 1-0 pitch popped up in the left field. Running in is Coleman. He makes the play. And we will have extra innings here in round one of the weekly showdown. So Loizaga back to the mound here in the top of the 10th. Greg Gross will lead things off. Uh, welcome back to the This Week in Perfect Team Weekly Showdown. 1-0 pitch, ground ball to second. Throw to first in time. Oh, what a way to come back with an extra inning game. Of course. Oh, man. So one gone, now two gone for Hank Severin. The first pitch from Loizaga, and that one is grounded to short. Ozzy Smith has it. Throw to first. It is in time to retire the side. Head to the bottom of the 10th. It's tied at five. Vic Power, the designated hitter, will lead off here in the bottom of the 10th against John Gellner. The 1-0. Swinging a fly ball left field. Vince Coleman is there for the out. One gone. So two outs now, and a runner on first is Gonzalez for Don Hoke. Facing Bruce Souter, the 1-1 pitch, and that one's grounded to second. Sharply... And no throw from Backman. Oh, wait. Was that an out? Okay, apparently he phantom stepped on second. 0 
okay, sure, fine, whatever. Fake me out with that game, why don't you? 5-5, five, five, head to the 11th. Okay, fine. All right, Tony Womack will lead things off. The 3-1 pitch, and that one is walked. Ball four. So walk number two for Loisaga, and here's Vic Davileo. The 1-1. One, one. Ground ball, base hit right field. Womack will head first to third. Nobody out. And a bit of a sticky situation for the gamblers here as Vince Coleman comes to the plate. The 1-0. Ground ball, base hit left field, and the Ink Astropia takes the lead. 6-5. And that's the score as we head to the bottom of the 11th. Coco Crisp will lead things off against Bruce Suter. Can he make some magic happen again? The 0-2. Ground ball to second. It will not happen this time. One gone. Here's Lavalier. First pitch from Suter. Line drive, left field, and caught by Coleman. Two gone. All up to Ozzie Smith. The count, one and two, the pitch. Actually, it's not up to Harvey Keene, and that one's in the right field deep, but playable. And the Castropia Jean runs. Win round one in 11 innings. Six to five. The more things change, the more they stay the same. <sighs> And performance anxiety strikes again. What do I have to do to win a game on stream? Apparently it's... <laughs> apparently the only way I have to win a game now in this tournament is to get wisdom tooth surgery every other week. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I don't know, man. I don't know. So, in terms of streams, I am still 0 for 2021. I know, Jersey Driver, it does seem unsustainable. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I thought I had a decent lineup, and even Coco Crisp, Coco Crisp had a homer. I, oh man, he batted six hundred with a homer. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm starting to believe Nishdet won last week. I don't freaking know. Oh my god. So anyway, um I'm I have a streamer's curse on me so bad right now. It's not even funny at this point. I, I I I don't know. I just I just don't know anymore. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just cursed, I guess. I don't know. So anyway, let's go ahead and uh, back out and back in, and uh, we're going to see where we're at in the tournament now. Now that I've been unceremoniously canned from the tournament in the first round, again, I mean... Huh. I don't know. 
Gotta keep the beard going? Honestly? Honestly, at this point, I'll keep the beard growing until I win a tournament game. Until I win a Twix. Until I win a This Week in Perfect Team weekly showdown stream game. If I win one game, then if I win a game, the next, I will not shave this. I will not shave this. Until I win a This Week in Perfect Team weekly showdown game on stream. You have my word. <laughs> Next week's format, Kevacom, it is Live Open 1875. <laughs> so in other words, I'll be joining CC Top. Oh, you're funny. All right. Oh, man. So while we're waiting to see where uh, where round four comes in, we might as well take a look at some of the other tournaments that are uh, coming up this coming week that will be giving out uh, some card prizes. Which that'll be that'll be fun to take a look at, see what's all see what's all coming up down the line. Some pretty good stuff probably, I bet. So let's take a look and see what uh, tournaments are coming up next week. We have the Saturday Iron Warriors tomorrow, where Jake Peavy, peak card from the Padres, is gonna be the big prize in that one. Paul Blair going to second place with Dustin McGowan going to third and fourth. And Francisco Barrios going to 5th through 8th. That tournament's already filled up and ready to go. The Sunday Wide Open that I'll be a part of as well. Coming up on Sunday, they'll have Noodles Han as the big prize in that one. Second place will get Sal Bando from the Oakland Athletics. Third and fourth will get Chris Fazio from the 1989 Brewers. And fifth through eighth will get Mark Clark from the 1998 Chicago Cubs. Some interesting cards there. Let's take a look at the Monday Super Non-Live Silver. And this is going to be a good one, folks. Bartolo Colon will be the prize in this one. From the Cleveland Indians. Second place will be Cliff Lee from the 2011 Philadelphia Phillies. Third and fourth will be Rick Monday from the 1970 Oakland A's. And fifth through eighth, we'll get Dan Plesak from the 1996 Pittsburgh Pirates. Taking a look at the Tuesday Super Bronze, we will have Ken Caminetti from the San Diego Padres as the big prize in that one. Donnie Bush from the Detroit Tigers going to second place. Third and fourth, we'll get Joe Hesketh from the 1985 Expos. And fifth through eighth, we'll get Noah Syndergaard from the 2015 New York Mets. Take a look at Spores Sandlot coming up. Ooh, this is going to be a good prize right here. Mike Cuellar from the Baltimore Orioles. Really good Diamond Tournament SE card here. He will be the big prize in that one. Second place will get Cy Seymour from the 1903 Cincinnati Reds. Third and fourth will get Dick Brown from the Detroit Tigers. And fifth through eighth will get Jeremy Accardo from the 2007 Toronto Blue Jays. Moving on down to the weekly dead ball coming up next week. First place will get Chan Ho Park from the 1998 LA Dodgers. Second place will get Rich Reese from the 1969 Minnesota Twins. A rare, rare gold tournament special edition card. Rich Reese. Goodness gracious. Third and fourth will get two regular packs as well. That'll be a fun one. We move down to the old, the weekly Ultra Cap, where Frank Baker is going to be the big prize in this one. Second place will get Mike Cuellar from the Baltimore Orioles. Third and fourth will get Jermaine Dye from the 06 White Sox. And fifth through eighth will get Javier Lopez from the 2013 San Francisco Giants. The Thursday Silver Snapshots look a little something like this. Tex Hewson from the Boston Red Sox. 
going to be the big prize in this one. Second place will get Herb Score from the 1955 Cleveland Indians. Third and fourth will get Joey Votto from the 2015 Cincinnati Reds. And fifth through eighth will get Eddie Brousseau from the 1964 Boston Red Sox. The Thursday Diamond Defense coming up next week. First place will get Sammy Sosa from the Chicago Cubs. Peak card there. Second place will get Bruce Hurst from the Boston Red Sox. Third and fourth will get Claude Osteen from the LA Dodgers. And fifth through eighth will get Victor Martinez from the Detroit Tigers. And finally, the last card tournament of the week, the weekly bronze cap. And look at the prize on this one, guys. Schoolboy Row from the Detroit Tigers. The big prize in this one. Second place will get Bruce Hurst from the Boston Red Sox. Third and fourth will get Kenny Rogers from the Texas Rangers. And fifth through eighth will get Francisco Barrios from the White Sox. And once again, the This Week in Perfect Team Weekly Showdown. Next week's format, a live open 1875 cap. So be very, very careful with how you build that roster. Signing up for that one right away. I'm also going to be signing up. Oh boy, do I want Bartolo? I'm going to sign up for the Lawn Live Silver, and we'll see what happens with that. All right, all right, all right. Let's go ahead and go back in and see where we're at. We should be, should be after round four at this point, if I do believe. Is there a way to filter tournaments to see what the what the reward is? No, you have to click on the tournament itself, the tournament uh, name itself when you're in the list to to see the rewards. Is that Bartolo playable in Perfect League? Yes, it is actually. There's quite a few people away from. Uh, Quite a few people that actually run uh, Bartolo on their team. The lucky people that have actually won them. No, because I believe we're about to head into round four here on the tournament. Come on, load faster game. I know you can do it. <laughs> yeah, I know I said run and Bartolo in the same sentence. I know, I know. Crazy, isn't it? All right, so let's see who is all going to be playing in round four here. We have the Milwaukee Pilots taking on the Wilmington Swashbucklers, the Charbonneau Lynx taking on the Fiji Iguana, the Beaver Creek Landings taking on the Welland Wizards, the Hasselberry Hounds taking on the Memphis Chicks, the Springfield Round Trippers taking on the Texas Rockets, the Mississauga Rush taking on the Ellicott City Express, And then we have the Arizona Boys of Summer take on the Castroville Mashers and the Indianapolis Essentials taking on the Hayesville Mercury. So those are your final 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 teams in this tournament. And speaking of Call Your Shot, MIT Hokey just mentioning Call Your Shot. Well, guess what? It's time for some Call Your Shot. We got 29 packs to open up tonight. And for those of you who are new to this, I know there's not a lot of you, but I know there's a few. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to be posting a Google Form link in the chat. And you'll fill it out with your Perfect Team username and which diamond or perfect card you think I'm going to pull out of these 29 packs tonight. We are going to be guaranteed two diamonds tonight. 
So keep that in mind when you call. If you get the call correct, depending on what you call, you'll win some perfect points. If you call a live diamond tonight, you will win 15,000 perfect points. If you call a historical diamond, you will win 44,000 perfect points. If you call a live perfect tonight, you will win 50,000 perfect points. And if you call a historical perfect tonight, you will win 100,000 perfect points. Okay, hang on. Let me uh, let me check my mic here. There we go. Thanks, thanks for the catch, IROC. Yep, just change that setting. Thanks, thanks for the catch on that, cause yeah, that that was um. <laughs> See, I'm a professional, right? Can can we get a professional in here? A professional that can check their mic settings before they go on stream. Jeez. Oh boy. Yeah, that that happens. Okay, fine, I'll change it back. There, I'll change it back. How's that? Yeah, blame Rich. Blame Rich. Blame Rich. All right. We'll we'll get this sorted out eventually. Um you have not missed the link yet. You have not missed the link yet. Because I'm about to post it here in three, two, one. Call your shot is open. Call your shot is open. You'll have two and a half minutes to fill it out. Let's see what they call today. <laughs> Let's keep telling them the sound is bad so we get more packs. Oh, man. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to figure out this microphone situation. This is just... Uh, I try. I try. I really do. It's a matter of whether or not these mics want to cooperate with me. All right, we're already getting some good calls in here tonight. Ooh, historical legend Johan Santana. I would love that. <laughs> Diamond legend peak Paul Molitor, please sell. Oh, I love, I love, I love your, I love your enthusiasm, C. Whitman. All right, we're down to a minute 20. We're down to a minute 20 to go. Yeah, I may as well call the cards I need. Exactly. Exactly. Ooh, and Andy Messersmith call. Wow. Michael Vick going deep in the old card catalog here. Lots and lots of good calls here. All right, we're down to the last... Last 30 seconds, last 30 seconds. And yep, I rock. The cap is 1875 next week. All right. We are down to 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And call your shot is closed. Call your shot is closed. All right, we have 166 responses tonight. 
Let's see. Let's see what happens. This should be some fun stuff coming out of these packs, hopefully. I really hope so. I hope you guys do, too. All right. First pack. Let's see what we get. And we get some historical gold action for Don Wilson from the 1971 Houston Astros. Some interesting, an interesting card here. Good old Don Wilson, 78 stuff, 68 movement, 67 control with 90 stamina. All right, and then, uh, and then we got Junior Garrett's obligatory bronze too. All right, we got uh, Darren Erstad from the O2 Anaheim Angels in this pack. And then we also got Donovan Solano and Ken Dixon from the 1985 Orioles. Also got Bill Verdon as a historical iron as well. A few interesting packs to start things off. Let's keep it on going here. We got uh, Luis Arroyo from the 1961 New York Yankees as our top bronze in this pack. And we also got Christian Walker and Joe Panic and 1994 Fernando Valenzuela as a historical iron. And the next pack, we only get one bronze or obligatory bronze, Domingo Santana. Next pack, another obligatory bronze, and it's Luis Urias from the Milwaukee Brewers. Faro Espinosa, Matt Guerrero as well. Next pack, we get Ross Stripling, Francisco Mejia, and Nate Jones as our bronzes. Next one. And we get some uh, Sad Fetty action here for Brooke Jacoby from the 1989 Cleveland Indians. 59 contact, 66 power, 60 eye, and 49 defense on this one. And we also got uh, Adalberto Mondesi as a historic, as a, um, our obligatory bronze, as well as John McDonald and Nick Punto as our historical irons. Next pack here, we get double live gold. And we get Byron Buxton from the Minnesota Twins and Aaron Nola from the Philadelphia Phillies. All right, all right, all right, not bad. Also got uh, Eddie Casco as a historical iron and Dylan Moore as our obligatory bronze. Next pack here, we get a couple of bronzes here. Tyler Zuber and Austin Gomber. Let's keep on keeping on here. And we get three more bronzes here. Carter Kiaboom, Julia Merriweather, and John Curtis. Meh. Let's keep going. And we get a live gold in this one. And we get Raphael Devers from the Boston Red Sox. 83 overall card there. And we also got Eric Karros and Martin Perez as our bronzes in this pack. Not bad, not bad. Next one, please. And we get a couple of bronzes here. Nico Herner and Benji Molina. Nothing too much to write home about. Next one, we get Vic Power from the Cle 1958 Cleveland Indians bronze card there. 66 overall. We also got Matt Kemp and Kevin Kiermeyer as well. We are zooming through here. We got 16 packs to go. Let's keep going. We got Ian Kennedy from the Kansas City Royals as our obligatory bronze in this one. Eleanor, I wish. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got here. We got, ooh, Mickey Vernon from the 1955 Washington Senators. That's a new bronze right there. 66 contact, 58 power, 56 eye, and 44 defense. Mickey Vernon, an absolute stud from the PT-19, PT-20 days. Ooh, boy. Let's keep going. Yeah, we get uh, Cedric Mullins and Freddie Galvis in this pack here. Oh, Tony Womack. Meh. And then we get Ryan McBroom from the Kansas City Royals. Meh. Next. 
And we get uh, a few live bronzes. Domingo Santana, Matt Joyce, Adam Conley, Blake Parker. Man, we also got Bill Russell as a historical iron. Let's keep going. And we got Brandon Inge from the 2006 Detroit Tigers as our top bronze here. As well as Jorge Lopez from the uh, Baltimore Orioles. Ten more packs to go. Zooming through here tonight. Got uh, Chad Pinder from the Oakland A's, Gregory Polanco from the Pittsburgh Pirates, and Rip Rapolsky from the 1953 St. Louis Cardinals. Nine more packs to go. Let's keep going. And we got uh, Jarrett Wright from the 1998 Cleveland Indians in this one. An interesting card here. New bronze. 64 stuff, 58 movement, 53 control, and 82 stamina on that one. Also got Kirk Sarloos from the Oakland A's, Ronnie Rodriguez from the Brewers, and Brock Holt from the Nationals. Eight more packs to go, and man, these packs have not been good tonight. Dom Nunez from the Colorado Rockies. Only thing of note. And it just keeps getting better. Hobie Milner, Juan Nicasio, Don Clendenon. And then we get AJ Puck from the Oakland A's. Oh man, this is um, mm, mm -mm. not fun tonight. Not fun packs tonight. Rick Peters. Yes. All right, we are in diamond pack territory now. So at least we're going to be doing something. At least we're going to be pulling something. And we pull something. We get Pete Alexander from the 1920s Chicago Cubs. A card that I do not own yet. 88 stuff, 67 movement, 82 control, and 92 stamina. I doubt anyone called this, but it would be absolutely incredible if someone did. And the answer is no. I have to crack packs if dish luck is this bad, because it actually might be good for me. Oh, man, Eleanor, I, I hope so. but Because other people have good packs, and I don't. And, ooh, okay, we got a couple of good cards in this one. The, the big one, JT Real Muto. From the Philadelphia Phillies, 96 overall. And we got two winners tonight, two winners. We have Zen Lunatic and Tom Budeman as winners tonight. Congratulations, you two have just won 15,000 perfect points for calling Mr. Real Muto. We also got uh, Dick Redding from the Negro League collection. As well as John Schreiber from the Detroit Tigers. All right, we are into historical pack territory. We got two of them coming up. Let's keep on keeping on. Let's get some good stuff here. And we get Scipio Spinks as our obligatory historical gold here from the 1972 St. Louis Cardinals. We also got Esmeal Rogers from the 2012 Cleveland Indians. 61 stuff, 63 movement, 62 control, and 17 stamina on this new bronze card. We also got Bob Milliken from the 1953 LA Do Brooklyn Dodgers, I should say. 94 stuff, 45 movement, 64 control, and 29 stamina. And we also got John Baker from the 06 Marlins. Ross Baumgarten. Interesting card there from the 1979 Chicago White Sox. And Craig Breslow from the Boston Red Sox. All right, one more pack. Can we get a historical diamond? The answer is no, but... But... We get Pat Carraway from the 1930s Chicago White Sox. Here's our obligatory historical gold. 76 stuff, 65 movement, 69 control, and 91 stamina on this card. 
Also got Bronzazi Smith from the 1982 St. Louis Cardinals. Warren Morris from the 1999 Pittsburgh Pirates. Kurt Stilwell from the 1988 Royals and Willie McGee from the 93 Giants and Ernie Banks from the 1954 Chicago Cubs. Alrighty, you know what? I'm a bit generous tonight. Let's open a couple more diamond packs just to celebrate the fact that we have a perfect point sale going on. I'll show you here real quick. We have a special offer going on right now with the Lunar New Year sale. 175,000 perfect points for just $60. 75,000 perfect points for 30. 25,000 for just $12. 12,000 perfect points for eight bucks. 5,500 perfect points for four bucks. You can't beat these deals. Oh man. Get your perfect points today. Holy moly. All right, we got two more diamond packs because I'm feeling generous tonight. Because those, those first 25, those were duds. Let's spread the wealth. And we get Fernando Tatis Jr. From the San Diego Padres. 91 overall card there. Woo boy. Let's see how many, uh, how many we got out of this one. We have three winners tonight. Three winners. We have Arklick as a winner tonight. We have Blarney 2 as a winner tonight. And I'm a hog as a winner tonight. Congratulations to you three. You have just won some 15,000 perfect points for Colin Fernando Tatis Jr. We also got Chipper Jones in here from the 1995 Atlanta Braves. And we also got John Lackey from the 2013 Boston Red Sox. One more diamond pack to go. And whoever said Francisco Lindor in the chat is a psychic. Because here's Francisco Lindor from the Cleveland Indians in this diamond pack here. Not an iron to be seen in this pack. Oh, my goodness. We also got Brian Anderson from the Marlins. Kevin Biggio from the Blue Jays. Ashton Godot from the Rockies. Wade Davis from the Rockies. Sean Newcomb from the Braves. Holy moly. Francisco Lindor. Let's see how many winners we got on this one. Just one winner tonight. And it is Airlog. Airlog with a winner tonight for 15,000 perfect points. Congratulations. You have just won 15,000 perfect points. Woo! The only one to call Lindor. Yep, so the lot so the diamonds we pulled tonight, Pete Alexander, JT Rio Mudo, Francisco Lindor, and Fernando Tatis Jr. Those last three were the ones that paid out. Alright. Congratulations to all of y'all for winning. So awesome. All right, let's go ahead and back out back in and see where we are with the tournament. We should be getting close to around round five, round six-ish at this point. Should be interesting to see where we're at.
Does ya did Yasmani Grandal get pulled? Nope, he did not, Tim. Huh. <laughs> yeah, I know he didn't actually call Cleveland player Lindor's a Met, but I'm going by what's on the card. I just go by what's on the card, Rybell. <laughs> I look a little bit like Sam Rockwell. Well, I'm flattered, for one. <laughs> I, I know who Sam Rockwell is, but, but I, I appreciate, I appreciate the compliment. Thank you. Thank you, Eleanor. Appreciate it. Oh, man. Next week's format is a pain? Good. <laughs> I'm just an evil genius with these formats. All right, let's see. We are in round six, and we're actually coming up on the finals. And let's see who our semifinalists are going to be. They are the Memphis Chicks. Facing the Charbonneau Lynx and the Arizona Boys of Summer taking on the Ellicott City Express. Those are your final four teams. That simulation's coming up here in just a little bit. Oh boy. Some good, good matchups here. Zach Granke, Mike McCormick, Earl Wilson, Vic Aldridge. Some good semifinal matchups here. But whoever loses here in the semifinals, they're not going home empty-handed. Third and fourth get two diamond packs tonight. It's just a matter of how many diamond packs are going to go to our... going to go to who tonight? Whew. Yep. Let's see. As we look at the uh, quarterfinal scores, here's how they got there. The Charbonneau Lynx defeated the Indianapolis Essentials 3-1 in the quarterfinals. The Ellicott City Express defeated the Texas Rockets 3-0 in the semifinal quarterfinals, I should say. The Memphis Chicks defeated the Beaver Creek Landings 4-3. A bit of a comeback from them in the late innings. And the Arizona Boys of Summer with a little bit of a squeaker, a 6-4 victory over the Milwaukee Pilots. So some good, good stuff here in the quarterfinals. We're going to go ahead and uh, back out and back in and see if we have a finals matchup, and then we can do a little bit of previewing, I should say. Yeah, I know there's a couple of Ellicott City teams out there. Never been to the... Never really gotten to the Eastern Seaboard that much, to be honest. I hear Maryland's a fine place to visit. So hopefully, while well, we're waiting for this to load up, Hopefully y'all y'all's perfect teams are having a good week so far. I know mine is right now. Um one of the top teams in my conference right now actually, looking pretty good. I'm in the same division as the uh Asbury Springboks, which everyone knows that's a really consistently tough team to face, and I'm in the same division as them. I'm afraid I'm going to be losing the division to them, so so uh keep me in your thoughts, keep my team in your thoughts and prayers and Help will them on to a victory. <laughs> but yeah, last week, last week was kind of um, uncanny valley for my team because I did good in the weekly showdown, but I was absolutely awful in the regular season. I finished 81 and 81. 
I was on the verge of relegation for a little bit there, too, from Diamond League. Like, holy cow, I could have been relegated to gold last week. That would have been something else. It's absolutely crazy. All right, we have our finals matchup. Let's see what we got. Take a look at the scores on this one. Who are our finalists? Who could they be? We have the Memphis Chicks with a four-run seventh inning, defeating the Charbonneau Lynx 4-2. Meanwhile, the Ellicott City Express cruising to a 3-0 win over the Arizona Boys of Summer. Vic Aldridge, Zach Granke, Mike McCormick, some good pitching. Some good, good pitching today. McCormick's performance, not enough. Holy moly. So that means our finals matchup looks a little something like this. The Memphis Chicks taking on the Ellicott City Express. Game one matchup looks like Yanni Chirinos taking on Zach Granke. Both won their first outings. Yanni Chirinos, his first outing against the Cats Pajamas. He went seven and a third, four hits, no runs, one strikeout, but 11 ground balls to nine fly balls in that one. A really solid outing for him. Meanwhile, Zach Granke in Ellicott City's matchup against the Connecticut Conmen went seven innings, gave up four hits, one run, two strikeouts to no walks, nine ground balls to nine fly balls in just 80 pitches. A good outing from him. Let's take a look at the rosters for both teams real quick. The Memphis Chicks, first of all. Gorgo, that's good to hear. Good to see you here. I know you're late, but you know what? I'll take that as a good excuse. All right, he has Yanni Torinos, Zach Granke, Neil Heaton, Dustin May, and Mike Miner in his rotation. Bill Daly, Gene Garber, Yumi Garcia, Don Newcomb, Bobby Shantz, Cody Stishak, Bruce Suter, Mike Timlin, and John Gellner. In the bullpen. Catching for him is Bob Boone and BJ Surhoff. Infield is Keith Hernandez, Carl Taylor, Kaz Matsui, Frankie Gustine, Jose Iglesias, and Ozzy Smith. In the outfield is Harvey Keene, Darren Erstad, Roger Cedeno, and Nemo Leibel. Looking at, the, uh, looking at the rest stats here for the Memphis Chicks, only three have even marginal rest issues here. Gellner's at 69%. Nice. Bobby Shantz at 55%. Yimmy Garcia's at 68%. We could see both Garcia and Gellner coming out of the pen in this series. But not a whole lot of action from this bullpen so far. Only three innings from Shantz, six innings from Gellner. Couple innings from Daly, three innings from Stashak, two and two thirds from Garcia. Gene Garber has an inning. So this bullpen's looking fairly well rested heading into this one. Meanwhile, we take a look at their opposition, the Ellicott City Express. Couple of few close victories so far, but. Only one real marginally tired person in their bullpen right now at this moment. I mean, Barcelo's at 100%, Ferguson's at 100%, Gellner's at 94, Loisaga's at 81, Fieldbar's at 100, Temlin's at 100, Wisick is at 91, Eugene Morion's the only one with real issues at 57%. Take a look at the rosters here. He's got Vic Aldridge, Nate Corneo, Zach Granke, Tristan McKenzie, and Nick Neidert in their rotation. And we just went through a little bit of their bullpen, but Lorenzo Barcelo, Caleb Ferguson, John Gellner, Jonathan Loisaga, Adrian Morion, Caleb Fielbard, Mike Timlin, and Jay Wittesick in the old bullpen. Bob Boone and Mike, Mike Lavalier behind the plate. Carl Taylor, David Fletcher, Kaz Sui, Cesar Tovar, and Ozzie Smith in the infield. Meanwhile, he's got Matty Lou, Darren Erstad, Kirby Puckett, Roger Cedeno, Greg Gross, and Paul Warner as his outfielders tonight. 
So a very, very intriguing matchup coming up here in the weekly showdown finals between the Chicks and the Express. Who do you think is going to win this matchup? Type in one in the chat for the Memphis Chicks. Type in two in the chat for the Ellicott City Express. Who do you think is going to win this matchup? And it looks like a fairly even matchup like most bronze tournaments usually are. As a simulating sign comes up. As we await that finals sim. I know Pump H is in the chat. If you can let me know when the sim comes in, that would be greatly appreciated. Few people liking Ellicott City's chances here. Honestly, I think this is a fairly even matchup. But honestly, like, like most tournaments, it'll all come down to how the bullpen performs. And so far, both bullpens have performed fairly well so far. Bullpen ERA for the Chicks is around a 204. That's not terrible. Bullpen ERA is around 338 for the uh for the express. But the starters ERA, 213, spark. All right, I'm getting word that the first sim is in. So let's go ahead and load that up and we'll uh, see what wonders game one of this week's This Week in Perfect Team Weekly Showdown Finals will bring us tonight. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys are too. Yeah, I'm looking at some of the chatter here about uh, music schools. I would love to go to a concert at a music school. Like, I, I'd love to attend one. Just just for the heck of it, you know? Because I know students do a lot of hard work to, to get ready for all that stuff. I'd love to just go and see one sometime, you know? It'd be pretty fun, I think. Then again, I was a choir nerd in high school, so what do I know? <laughs> All right, the first sim is in. At least I thought it was. It is not. Pump, you lied. Maybe if I try logging in again, maybe that'll work. I don't know. <laughs> Bad weave, changing my vote to three. Ah. Hey, sometimes the bands are more interesting than the football team. I should know. But sometimes they are just as interesting as the football team. Trust me, I was at Western Michigan back when they made the Cotton Bowl back in 2016. That was a fun one. That was a fun season. Yeah, I've heard I've heard good things about the the Marching 110. That's a that that's a fun band.
All right, just waiting for this thing to load up. All right, here we go. There we go. Let's load up the highlight reel here at game one. Let's see what we got. William Newshire Clark picture? No, that's uh no, nah, that's uh that's Justin Verlander. That's eh, Justin Verlander. Alright, let's go to game one here of the This Week in Perfect Team Weekly Showdown Finals for this week. We have Zach Granke on the mound for the Ellicott City Express. Woo! Okay. Excuse me. <coughs> A little bit of a lump in the old throat there. Got Nemo Leibold leading off for the Memphis Chicks here in the top of the first. Let's get going. Count 1-1 one, one from the right-hander. Here's the pitch to the leadoff man. That one's lined to the left field, and that'll be a leadoff single for Leibold. An early single for the Chicks, and they'll bring up Roger Cedeno. Count one, two, the pitch from Granky. So in the ground ball second, could be two to short for one. The relay in time for an early first inning double play. Ah. Okay, I didn't know that, Gorgo. That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. We pick it up in the bottom of the first. Runner on third with one out. For Matty Alou facing Yanni Chirinos. And a 2 0 count to the first baseman. That one's gr grounded to second, throw to first in time. The run will come in to score. As, and it's 1 0 Express. Pick it up top four now. Runners on the corners with nobody out. Granky still on the mound for the Express. Frankie Gustine at the plate. Count full, the pitch coming. And that one's lined and caught by the first baseman, Nalu. One gone. Nicely snagged out there. Now bring BJ Sir off to the plate. Second and third with one out, the 1-1 one, one pitch, and that one's grounded to second. Right at the second baseman, Matsui, the throw to first, is in time for out number two. But the run will score. We are tied at one. We jump all the way to the top of the eighth. Still one to one. <clears throat> Still one one. Two outs, nobody on. For Nemo Leibold for the Memphis Chicks facing Caleb Fieldbar. Lefty on lefty here. Here's the pitch and a swing of a liner into right field. That one's gonna fall in for a two out single for the Chicks right fielder. At least his second hit of the game, but that's all they'll get in that eighth inning. We have to the bottom of the eighth. Kaz Matsui will lead off for the Express facing John Gelder. Here's the first pitch from the right-hander, and that one's grounded to second. Jen, it gets through for a base hit. Lead-off single for Kaz Matsui, and that will bring Ozzie Smith to the plate. Count one and two with nobody out, and a runner on first. The pitch from Gellner, and that one's ground to second. Could be two to short for one, but no relay from Ozzie Smith. And the expresses Ozzie Smith is safe. Bottom eight, one on, one out for Bob Boone. Count two and one, the pitch. Swinging the ground ball to second, softly. The throw to first in time for the second out. Runner will advance to second, and now bring Cedeno to the plate. Count 0 and 2, runner on second with two outs, and that one is in there for strike three. Gellner gets a strikeout looking to end the inning. We head to the ninth. We are still tied at one. Don Newcomb will lead off here in the top of the ninth for the Memphis Chicks facing off against John Gellner for the Express. Two strike pitch, here it comes. Got him looking. Strike three, one gone. Two gone now for Frankie Gustine. The 2-2 coming from Gellner. 
Swing and a miss, strike three, and the chicks are out of the inning. We have the bottom of the ninth walk-off territory here for the Yellow Cut City Express. Paul Water will lead things off. The 2-2 pitch from Gellner, and that one's popped up. Straight up on the infield, and it'll be the shortstop Smith taking care of this one. Long gone. And that'll bring Matty Lou, the first baseman, to the plate. Count 0-1 with one out. Here's the pitch. So we're going to line drive left field, and that one's going to fall in for a base hit. Matty Lou with a clean one-out single, and that'll bring Cesar Tovar to the plate. Runner on first, one out, full count from Gelman. The pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. A bad swing from Cesar Tovar. On the slider. And that will bring Greg Gross, the right fielder, to the plate. Count 3-0, and oh, the pitch. Swing the ground ball to third on the 3-0, oh, the throw to first. And we will have extra innings here in game number one. Still tied at one as we head to the 10th. Gellner back to the mound for the express. Surhoff at the plate to lead things off for the chips. The pitch. Swing the liner. And oh, what a catch made by Gellner. A comebacker, and he snags it right out of the air. One gone, and now two gone for Kazmat Sui. The 3 1 coming from Gellner. Walked in ball four. Two out base runner for the Chicks, and now bring Ozzie Smith to the plate. Count one, two, the pitch from Gellner, and that one is popped up. It'll be the third baseman, Gustine, taking care of this one, and now retire the side. Head to the bottom of the 10th. Still walk-off territory for the Express. And here's Darren Erstad to lead things off. Here's the pitch. Swing a line drive right field, but right at the right fielder Libel for the out one gone. Two gone now for the pinch hitter Carl Taylor. He's pinch hitting for Ozzy Smith here. An interesting choice. Facing Bobby Shantz. The one, two, swing and a miss, strike three. And we head to the 11th. Still tied at one. One's wild here in the top of the 11th. Nemo Leibold leading things off against John Gellner out there for at least his third inning of work. 3-2 pitch grounded to third. Throw, long throw from the third baseman Tovar in time. One gone. Two gone now. Now bring Don Newcomb to the plate. Defensively now for the Express, David Fletcher playing shortstop. That could be key later on. Full count to Newcomb, the 3-2, swing a high fly ball, deep right field, going back is Gross, looking up, it's gone! Don, ball go far for Don Newcomb, and Memphis takes a 2-1 lead here in the 11. 369 feet for the Chicks DH. And that'll bring Keith Hernandez to the plate. First pitch from Gellner. And that one's lined into left field. That's going to be a two-out single. The Chicks starting to pour it on here in the 11th. As Frankie Gustine will come to the plate. Facing Gellner, who's still out there. That one's up the middle, and that's going to be a base hit. Rounding second, heading for third is Hernandez. He's going to be in there safely. Runners on the corners with two out, but that's where it will stop. As Bobby Shantz will try to close things out here in the bottom of the 11th, Bob Boone will lead things off for the Express. The 0-1 from Shantz. Ground ball to second. The throw to first from Matsui in time one gone. Now bring Roger Cedeno to the play. 3-1 <clears throat> pitch from Shantz. Swing and a ground ball to short. Throw to first from Smith in time. Two gone. One more out to get. Here's Shantz facing Warner. Count three and one, the pitch. Swing and a flying drive. Left field, and that one's going to be bounced off, bounced in for a base hit, and they'll go over the wall. It'll be a ground rule double for Paul Warner. A ground rule double for Paul Warner with two outs. And here's Matty Alou. 
could tie this game up with one swing of the bat, and this one's popped up. Playable into center field. Erstad makes the play, and the Memphis Chicks will take game one by a final score of 2-1 to one in 11 innings. So Memphis taking game one with a big 2-1 victory. Can they complete the sweep? Let's load up game number two, which has just come in. And we'll see if the Chicks can complete the sweep. Or will the Ellicott City Express force a winner-take-all game number three? Oh, this should be good. Boy. Man, if game two is as exciting as game one was, oh, I can't wait. So once again, hopefully all your perfect teams are doing well so far this season. I can't wait to take a look at mine again here after the stream. And I'll be taking a look at them again on Sunday night on the perfect team weekly prep which is coming back to the air nine o'clock eastern or so on sunday nights following drc's perfect league world series stream always a fun time always a fun time so don't forget to tune in for that and also on saturday don't forget to tune in for yukara and kazumi's baseball bingo stream that's always a good time she does some good work over there on that stream All right, so game two is in. Let's see what happens in game number two. Can the Chicks complete the sweep? Or will Ellicott City force a game number three? Let's go to the highlight reel. Dustin May taking the mound for the Chicks here in game number two. Roger Cedeno leading off for the Ellicott City Express. The first pitch from May, and that one's grounded to first. Right at the first baseman, Hernandez. One gone. And we stay in the top of the first. Wander on second with one out for Matty Alou. Facing Dustin May, the 1-1 pitch. And that one's grounded. Base hit into right field. Wander rounding third. He's going to try to score. The throw from right field is not in time. And just like that, the Ellicott City Express are up 1-0 here in Game 2. We pick it up bottom third. The Memphis Chicks still do not have a hit yet. Tristan McKenzie absolutely shutting them down so far. Jose Iglesias at the plate. 1-0 from the right-hander. And that one's driven deep into right center field out of line. Ball go far for Jose Iglesias. 426 foot shot to tie the game at one. Tristan McKenzie, that was just a high fastball. Iglesias knew what to do with it. And we move along to the bottom of the fifth, still tied at one. Iglesias back at the plate. Jay Widdesick on the mound for the Express. 1 1, grounded to second. Grounded to short, I should say, to second for one. In time for the double play. A 6-4-3 off the bat of Iglesias. And we head to the bottom of the seventh. Frankie Gastein at the plate for the Chicks. Facing Mike Timlin. The right-hander for the Express. The 1-2. Swing a line drive. And that one's going to fall in for a base hit. So a leadoff single for the Chicks third baseman. Now bring B.J. Surhoff to the plate. Count 1-0, the pitch from Timlin, and that one is into center field on a line and a sliding play made by Darren Erstad. One gone. 
And speaking of Darren Erstad, here he is now for the Chicks. Runner on first one out and 0-1 count from Timlin. The pitch is lined and flown into left field. Cedeno loping under it for the out. Two gone. Now bring Jose Iglesias to the plate. Has the Chicks only run with the homer. The 2-1 pitch and that one's lined into right field and that's going to be a base hit. Here comes Gustin for second. He's rounding second. He's heading for third. The throw from Gross not in time. Runners on the corners, two outs for Ozzie Smith. Count full to three, two. He walked in ball four. And the Chicks have an opportunity here with two outs. And the base is loaded for Nemo Leibel. Here's the first pitch. Swing the ground ball right at the first baseman of Lou. He'll take those two steps to the bag to retire the side. And we head to the eighth. Still tied at one. Bottom eight now. Loizaga on the mound for the Express facing Keith Hernandez. The 2-2 two -two to the Chicks first baseman. And that one's into right field. And a diving play made by Greg Gross to end the inning. We head to the ninth. We are still tied at one. A bit of deja vu, perhaps, as Cesar Tovar will lead things off for the Express here in the top of the ninth against Bruce Suter. 1-1 one, one pitch. That one is popped up. Shortstop Smith will have it for the out. One gone. Two gone now for Darren Erstad. Count 0-2, the pitch from Suter. Swing the line drive, right center field. That one's down. He'll go all the way to the wall. Picking up in center field is Erstad. The throw to second is going to be not in time. So a two-out double for Darren Erstad. And that will bring Kazmat Sui to the plate. Big opportunity here for the express second baseman. The 0-1 from Bruce Suter coming. The pitch. Swing a fly ball. Right field. That one's going to get down and go all the way to the wall. He'll be an RBI double at least for Kazmat Sui. And he'll have a sliding double. And the Express take a 2-1 lead here in game number two. Bottom nine, last chance for the Chicks. Frankie Gustine will lead things off against the new pitcher, Lorenzo Barcelo. A really, really good relief card here. The pitch, line drive, base hit in the left field. Chicks could have something brewing here in the bottom of the ninth here with the leadoff single. Now bring B.J. Sir off to the plate. Here's the first pitch from the right-hander to the lefty batter. Swing the line drive, center field, coming on Erstad. He dives and makes the play. Holy moly, what a fabulous catch by Darren Erstad. One gone. And now bring the Chicks Erstad to the plate. Count one and two, the pitch from Barcelo. Got him looking on the outside corner, strike three. Ellicott City, one batter away from forcing a winner-take-all game three. Here's Iglesias, the 1-0 pitch. Line drive, base hit, center field. Here comes Gustin, and he for third! The throw from Erstad in time to nail him! A two-plan to end the game! And Ellicott City wins this one, two to one! We are tied in the series, one to one. What a game, what an ending. And we head to game number three. <laughs> yeah, the dugout made it to third before Gustine did. Yeah. As far as I'm hearing, game three is already it. I tell you, if game three is as entertaining as these last two games were, oh boy. I cannot wait to call that one. Woo boy. Woo boy.
Hopefully you all are enjoying this so far tonight. I know I am. Even though I still can't win a first round game on stream. <laughs> still don't know what I'm going to be doing. <clears throat> That's a good strategy, Pump. Don't look at the game. Rely on my call. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Just waiting for the uh, file to load on in and we'll get things going. Well, I'm glad you asked there, Zandra. Um, I'm doing great. Uh, my mouth is healing actually fairly nicely. Uh, my, my folks are actually surprised I've been healing so well. Um, I've been able to eat uh, solid foods for the last couple of days. I've had... Uh, had chicken nuggets the last couple of days. I've had uh, I've had cheeseburger. I've had some pizza. So I'm kind of getting back to normal. I'm not quite a hundred percent there yet, but I think I'm just about there. Um, but yeah, I'm doing a lot better than I was the day of. <laughs> shout out to the uh, shout out to the meds that they gave me. That helped keep me sane. All right. Game three, Memphis Chicks against the Ellicott City Express. Is that the McDonald's diet? Um, no, that, no, nah, no. Nah. The cheeseburger was Culver's yesterday. Because I deserved one. All right, let's go to the game screen. Game number three, Nick Neidert getting the start for the Ellicott City Express. Facing Nemo Leibold to lead things off for the Chicks. And Nider already behind in the count. 3-0. Could this be a leadoff walk from the right-hander? The answer is yes. So a leadoff walk for Nemo Leibold. And a couple batters later, here's Don Newcomb for the Chicks. 2-2 from Nider coming. Swing of the line drive, base hit, center field. Leibold coming to third, he's rounding third, he's heading home, the throw coming home from Kirby Puckett, not in time. And it's 1-0 Memphis, just like that. We pick it up now all the way in the bottom of the fifth, the score still 1-0. That one hit from Don Newcomb, the only hit so far for the Chicks. Roger Cedeno now at the plate, runner on first, two outs, Facing Neil Heaton. The 1-1 pitch. Swing the ground ball. Softly to short. Going to be a tough play for Ozzie Smith. He has no throw. An infield single for Roger Cedeno. Smith goes to second. And that brings Greg Gross to the plate. Count 2-1. The pitch from the lefty. Swing the ground ball to short. The throw to second for the force. And now retire the side. Still 1-0 Chicks. As we head to the sixth. Don Newcomb at the plate facing Nick Neidert. Newcomb the owner of the only hit in the only RBI so far in the game for the Chicks. The 1-1. Swing the ground ball to third. To second for one. The relay. In time. Double play. Tovar. To Matsui. To Taylor for the double play. And we head to the bottom of the sixth. Ellicott City at the plate. Kirby Puckett. Batting here with two outs and Wanner on first. 2-1 count from the right-hander, Bill Daly. Swinging a ground ball. Softly to third. Going to be a tough throw. Not in time. The throw from the third baseman, Gustine. Not in time. It's an infield single for Kirby Puckett. And that will bring Kaz Matsui to the plate. The first pitch from Daly. That one, Sard grounder to second, no throw from the second baseman, Matsui. So the express Matsui gets on with an infield single to his chick's counterpart. And the bases are loaded with two outs for Babu. Big at bat here, the first pitch, swing the ground ball, base hit center field. Pat Water will score. Here comes Puckett for the plate. The throw from Erstad, not in time. 
And the Express take a 3-1 lead. Express take a 2-1 lead, I should say. And now bring Ozzy Smith to the plate. 3-0. Walked in ball four and the bases remain loaded. As Roger Cedeno comes to the plate now. Count 2-2 two -two from Daly. Here's the pitch. Swing the ground ball to first. Right at the first baseman Hernandez. He'll step on the bag to retire the side. But the Express get a two-run single. From Bob Boone to take the lead as we head to the seventh. Darren Erstad with one out facing Jonathan Loisaga. The 0-1. Swing a line drive right field. That one's down. He'll go to the corner. Erstad rounding first, heading for second. The throw from Gross is going to be not in time. A one-out double for the Chick center fielder. And that'll bring Ozzie Smith to the plate. First pitch from Loisaga, swinging the ground ball to first, right at the first baseman, Taylor. Two gone. So it'll be up to the chicks, Bob Boone here. Loisaga heading the count, 0-2, the pitch, and that one gets away from the catcher, Boone! And we have a tie game here in the seventh on the wild pitch. 2-2 two, two the score. Oh my goodness. A huge error there. And we head to the top of the eighth. Field bar on the mound for the Express facing Nemo Libel. Full count to the leadoff man. The pitch. Walked him low. Ball four. So a leadoff base runner and Roger Cedeno will come to the plate. Count 1-0. The pitch. Ground ball. It's hard to third. A diving play, but no throw. From the third baseman, Tovar. An infield hit for Roger Cedeno. And Don Newcomb will come to the plate in a huge situation here. The count, one and two, the pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. A big strikeout there from Fieldbar. A huge one. And that'll bring Keith Hernandez. The 0-1. Seeing the pop-up. Foul ground, and the catcher Boone will take care of this one, and all of a sudden, there's two outs. Here's Gustine. The 2-0 from Fieldbar. Swing a line drive, left center field. That one is down. He'll go off the wall. Libel will come in to score. We'll see what they do with Cedeno here. He's rounding third. He will score. Here comes Gustine for third. He is safe. A two-run triple. For Frankie Gustine. And the Chicks take a 4-2 lead. What a turn of events here in the 7th and 8th. As Bruce Suter will come in to pitch for the Chicks here in the 8th. Kirby Puckett with one out. The 3-1 from Suter. Swing the line drive. Base hit center field. A clean one out single for Kirby Puckett. That'll bring Kaz Matsui to the plate. The 2-2 two -two from Suter. Swing the line drive, left field, and that one's down, it'll go off the wall. Here comes Puckett for third. We'll see what the third base coach wants to do here. He's sending him home. The throw comes to third, and Matsui has an RBI triple. And Ellicott City back within one, it's 4-3. And a new pitcher will come in for the Chicks. It'll be Cody Stashek facing Bob Boone. The count full. The pitch. Swinging a fly ball. Center field. Playable, but is it deep enough? The catch is made. The throw coming home from Erstad. Not in time. And the sack fly from Bob Boone ties the game. What a back-and-forth match we are having here tonight. As Ozzie Smith will come to the plate with two outs. The first pitch from Stashak. Ground ball to first, right at Hernandez. But that'll do it, but not before two runs come across for the Ellicott City Express. We are tied at four, heading to the ninth. Nate Cornejo. 
will come and take the mound for the Ellicott City Express. This could go one of two ways here, folks. This could go either really good or really bad. Let's find out which one it is for the Express, the 1-0. Fly ball, left field. Playable for Cedeno, one gone here in the ninth. And that will bring Bob Boone to the plate with one out. The 1-1 one -one pitch coming from Cornejo. Swing the line drive, center field. That one's going to fall in for a base hit. Clean hit to center field. Here's Matt Suey. The pitch. Swing the fly ball, left field. Once again, playable for Cedeno. He makes the catch. Two gone here in the top of the ninth. That'll bring Leibold to the plate. Count full from Cornejo. Swing the ground ball to first. And taking it to the bag himself is Taylor for the out. We head to the bottom of the ninth. Sayonara territory for the Express. Cody Stashak back on the mound for the Chicks here in the bottom of the ninth. Roger Cedeno will lead off the 1-2 from the right-hander. Swing the pop-up. On the infield, he'll be the third baseman, Gustine, taking care of this one. One gone. Two gone now for Carl Taylor. The 1-2 from Stashak. Swing the ground ball to short. Throw from Smith. And we will have extra innings here in game number three. Holy moly. What a game. What a series we are having so far tonight. Nate Corneo back on for a second inning of work for the Express. Roger Cedeno will lead things off. Two-strike pitch. Swing the ground ball to second. And the throw to first from Matsui in time. One gone. Now bring Don Newcomb to DH with one out. The 0-2 pitch. Swing the ground ball. Line drive. Base hit. Left field. Don Newcomb with a one-out single here. And that will bring Keith Hernandez to the plate. A big opportunity here. A gap shot could give Memphis the lead. Full count from Cornejo. The pitch. Did he go? He did not go. Ball four. Go ahead, run, and scoring position now for the Chicks. As Frankie Gustine will come to the plate. Adrian Morione will come in to pitch for the Express. The one-two. Fly ball right field. In comes Gross for the out. Tagging up, heading to third is Newcomb. And he's safe. And Memphis takes the lead. Don't know what happened. But he scored somehow. 5-4 as we head to the bottom of the 10th. Memphis takes the lead. We're going to have to check the box score on this one to see what happened. But bottom 10, Matty Alou will pinch hit and lead off here for Ellicott City in the bottom of the 10th. And that one's lined into left field for a base hit. A good call by the manager to pinch hit a Lou, and now bring Paul Warner to the plate. Stashak still on the mound here. The first pitch from the righty to the lefty. Seeing the pot line drive, base hit center field. And the first two are on for the Express here in the bottom of the 10th. And now bring Kirby Puckett to the plate. Stashak on the mound. He has an extreme fly ball pitch type. Could factor in here. The one two to Puckett. He got him looking strike three. Oh, that's a big strike out there. One gone for Kaz Matsui. A Lou at second. One or at first. One out. The 0 2 from Stashak to Matsui. Swing a fly ball left field, but right at Sedeno. Two gone. One out to get for the Chicks, and here comes Bob Boone. Even count here, the count two and two. The pitch from Stashak. Swing and a miss, strike three. 
and the Memphis Chicks are your This Week in Perfect Team Weekly Showdown Champion. Final score, 5-4 to four in 10 innings. Whoo, boy, what a series. What a game, what a series. Holy moly. Let's take a look at the box score here. I, I want to see what happened. What in the world happened there in the top of the 10? It was a wild pitch. It was a 1-2 wild pitch from Adrian Morione to score Don Newcomb from third. Oh, my goodness. But we saw the wild pitch to score the go-ahead run in the eighth, right? Whew. Wow. What a series, though. What a series. Congratulations to both teams. What a great, what a great series. Holy moly. And I want to thank you guys. I want to thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Thank you so much for welcoming me back after my wisdom tooth surgery. Once again, I'm doing great, by the way. Um, whoo, boy. Should I sell one and face the franchise, Griffey or Henderson? I'd say sell Griffey. That's just me, though. I don't know. Oh, man. Well, thank you all so much for tuning in tonight. Don't forget, tune in Saturday for Yuka Kazami's uh, baseball bingo stream. Tune in Sunday for DRC's Perfect, Team, Perfect League World Series stream and my Perfect Team Weekly Prep stream. It's going to be a great weekend of Perfect Team and OTP content. I can't wait to share it all with you. Have a great night, everybody. And if you want to follow us here on Twitch, hit that heart button down there in the bottom right-hand corner. You'll be notified every time we stream. If you want to follow us on social media, we are on Twitter, at OTP Developments and at OTP Perfect Team. And if you want to join our Discord, we are at discord.gg slash OTP. I've been DishNet34. Thank you so much for tuning in again tonight. Have a great night, everybody. This has been DishNet34, signing out.